Hello, today I'm going to be doing a look and a review of the Spiral MTL RDA by Ambition Mods. So this is how it comes in the box. Take it out of the box. The atomizer there. Let's take out what else is in there. Okay, so inside the box you get the atomizer, you get two Allen keys, you get a little bag of spares, basically a couple of uh, post screws and a non squonky 510. That's basically what you get in there, move that out of the way. So the RDA itself, it is £26.99 currently in the UK. The overall height is 35.8 millimeters. I do not know if that is including the drip tip because the information I have, it doesn't say so. The width is 18 millimeters because it's an 18 millimeter atomizer. Uh, the weight is 26 grams. As you can see there, you have a 510 drip tip. So you can put any drip tip you want in there. That's not a problem at all. Okay, you got some knurling around the top there, and then you have your air holes. So the air holes go from a 0 0.8, a 1, 1.2, 1.4, and 1.6 millimeters. You look at the bottom there, and we turn it around so you can actually see it properly. You can see there you have the Spiral MTL RDA by Ambition Mods have a serial number and the EU markings. So that's it for how it looks on the outside. Okay, right, so we'll go through the um, pros and cons. So the pros on this, from my opinion, are it's um, nice low profile RDA. Uh, the flavor is good from it. Um, it's got a nice tight draw. Um, it's affordable and it looks good. Sorry for that pause there, I was looking at my notes and I wrote, it looms good. <clears throat> and I was trying to remember what word that should have been. And it was looks. So yeah, so that's the, that's the pros for that. For the cons, um, this is really a, a strange one to say is a con because it's a design point of these RDAs. They are designed to be very small and very tiny. Therefore, you don't get much juice capacity in them. But... And if you're not chain vaping it, that's fine. But for me, because when I go out from work for a vape break, I'm pretty much chain vaping for a few minutes. Um, you have to squonk a lot with this. So <clears throat> it's going to depend on you whether that's a con or not. For me, that was a con. That just means that this style of RDA is not design, is not what I would want to use on a daily basis. Um, but for me, I had to put that down as a con. And the other con is for the drip tip um, because obviously this is very low profile, very small, it gets warm quickly and I found that the, 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 the drip tip that's applied with is too small for me because my lips just hit the metal on it and just, yeah, as soon as you're vaping you run the risk of burning your lips on it if you're chain vaping it like I do. So again, so for me, <clears throat> it's subjective, but for me that was a con. So just to do a quick comparison for you. Um, I'll just do a comparison against the um, Berserker MTL RDA. So as you can see, it's they're both 80 mil, 80 mil wide or diameter atomizers, but obviously the spiral is much smaller, and because of that, again for me, has reduced juice capacity. Um, so for building and coiling, um, for building and coiling, the spiral is much easier to build on than the Berserker. Obviously, if you look at previous videos, that always becomes the case because the Berserker can be a little bit fiddly. Um, from from wicking standpoint, there are RDAs, they both wick the same way, so that's much of a muchness. Flavour, very similar, I found, for these. Um, personally, part of me still prefers the Berserker um, because of the under airflow options you get. Um, for me, personally, I still prefer that, but they're both very good flavour. So... Overall, from a, the only real difference is the build perspective. It's much easier to build on on the spiral. Um, and everything else is just down to personal preference. So in conclusion, would I recommend buying one of these? 
Um, for me, it's it's uh, it's, it's as always with anything, it's personal preference. There's nothing about this that would make me say don't go out and buy it if you like the look of it and, and are interested in trying it and and happy with the fact that obviously it's an 18 very small 18 millimeter millimeter atomizer that uh, that you're gonna have to squonk a lot with um definitely it works well it's built well um it's easy to build on and the flavor is pretty good as well so from that perspective if, if that's the sort of thing you're looking for i would recommend it personally for me um i'm glad i've got it um it will I'll keep it in my collection. I'm glad I bought it, but um, it's not something I would use every day because I prefer a little bit more juice capacity um, in the atomizers that I use. So for me, it's not an all day, all day vape, all day use, but um, it, it's very good at what it does. So yes, I would recommend buying this. So thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I'm going to try something different this time. There was a previous um, comment made on one of my videos to say that they would like to see me trying to build the uh, things I'm reviewing so after this I'm going to put on my attempt at building and putting a coil into this so if you're interested in if you're interested in the atomizer and interested in see a build go into the atomizer um, and fancy a laugh at somebody else trying to put something a uh, coil and atomizer on on camera um, Please feel free to watch that afterwards. Um, if you've got any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Right, I'm going to attempt something which is probably quite foolhardy, and I am going to attempt to put a coil in this RDA live on video. This is only the second attempt of doing this. The first one went really well. It went so well, I thought I'd do it a second time. So let's see if we can manage to do this or not. So, I have a coil here, which is a Canthal A126AWG um, coil that I made myself. 10 wraps, normally comes out about 1.2 ohms, 1.1, 1.2. 1 um, we'll see what happens there, because the last time I wicked this, it certainly didn't come out of that. So, uh, let's see if we can get it right this time. So, you put your coil in. To there like so don't necessarily worry about angles and stuff like that that will sort itself out as you go so let's give it a try at <laughs> let's give it a try and actually screw the coil in let's see right so I have Oil in and the rod there. Now I tend to hold this up a little bit because this RDA sometimes the with thinner wire the it, it will go underneath the screw, and I want to try to make sure I don't do that. Let's put this on here. Are you trapping the screw? No, you're not. You're just pushing the screw. You're just pushing the wire out. Hold you down a bit further. And the fantastic. That's one side down and one side to go. So let's try this here. Let's keep this in shot if we can. Push the down a bit, make sure it's inside there. Uh -huh. this in and see why or not yes we have right okay so that is the wire caught in let me turn this around and then just adjust the coil push the coil down a bit here This ain't going to be a pretty coil, it will do the job. Okay. Take that out. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I've, um, I've done worse, but I've done better. 
So trimming off the wires, the only good thing about this is as you can see here, let's put it back in there, there go. You see the there is a little bit of space there between where you put the coil in and the edge of the deck. So it does mean it isn't too bad for when you're when you're trimming the wire. But make sure you get it nice and close. And as you can see there, <clears throat> there's plenty of space between where I've cut the wire off and the edge of the deck. So there's gonna be no problem with shorts there, but we will check anyway, because you always need to do that. Trim off the other one. Does that look, that one looks even a little bit better. You can see that there. Let me just go in and have a look. Yeah, this looks good. This one, I am actually just gonna build some braces push this wire a little bit just to make sure there's no chance of a short which is there and there we have a coil yeah could look better coil let's see that is showing as 1.7 so let us heat up the coil And everybody does this different ways. I tend to just pulse it gently and scrape while I'm doing it. I'm pretty sure that's going to sound fantastic on the microphone. Oh yeah, that's spiking. That's going to really annoy people watching this. Let me put some more peat through it. And there you go. It's now glowing from the center out, which is what you want it to do. And now let's see what it's saying it is 1.3 that's fine that's within the margin of error for me normally one normally it would say something like 1.1 on this and then when i put it on a mod it'll say 1.2 1.1 1.2 so it says 1.1 anything over ohm i'm always happy with <clears throat> so i will deal with that so I'm just going to let this cool down for a minute and then I will come back and put the cotton in it. Right, so that has cooled down a little bit now. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to get some Muji cotton and put it in there. Uh, so I will take off about that much. Now, this is on a video camera and I'm really up close to it. So that is going to look like a hell of a lot of cotton when you compare it to that. So it looks like more cotton than you would ever need. And I find when I watch other people do building videos, I'm always like confused about well, how much cotton is that? Am I doing enough? Am I using not enough? And it's just over time you get used to how much cotton you need and how you want to do it. So that's how much I tend to use or I will use in this occasion. And what I tend to do is I just pull gently the fibers out a bit and all that really does is that just makes it a little bit easier when you're thinning out the cotton once you put it in the RDA and I just kind of semi fold it and then twist the ends that gives me a nice sized cigar shape this is probably going to be too much cotton but we'll find out in a minute right and then you've got a nice little point to put through your coil There, I just get my tweezers, pull on it, and then just put it through. And as always, say you want the cotton to be tight but loose enough so as you can pull it, still pull it back and forwards. And if you find it's a little bit too tight, I just have to pull a little few little strands off like that, either side. Now that's going through fine. <clears throat> now with this RDA, as I will have said earlier, you really don't need much cotton in it because it doesn't hold a lot of liquid. So what I will do with this one is I will just trim it off just past the edge of the deck on both sides like that. So the cotton just about off the edge of the deck either side F 
fluff out the cotton slightly. Because I've split out the ends, it doesn't need much fluffing out. I only recently started pulling the cotton out a little bit before putting it in. Um, it was taking me forever to get the cotton fluffed up so as it looks like how professional people do it on YouTube. Um, this decidedly is not how that looks, but there you go. Now I just get my other tweezers of these style here, and you just literally put the cotton into the bottom of the deck. Gently push it in. It shouldn't be too packed. It should just be fill the deck, but not. You shouldn't feel too much. You shouldn't feel any pressure or anything when you're putting it together. And that <clears throat> is basically how you wick up this RDA.